This just arrived. It's a new lens. Why don't we open the box and see what's inside? Here it is. It's the Lens Baby Velvet 56. Now, you may be asking yourself the question, why, as a landscape photographer, would I want to get a lens that's designed mostly for portraits or macro? And it's the very same question I asked myself when Lens Baby emailed me and says, would you like to try our Velvet 56? Then I thought to myself, why wouldn't I try it? Am I so stuck in my ways as a landscape photographer that I'm not willing to try new things? So I emailed them back and they sent me the lens out. So what can you expect in this video? Well, first of all, here's a couple of things it's not. First of all, it's not an ad. Yes, they've lent me the lens, but they're not paying me to create this content. And also it's not gonna be a, some sort of technical lens review either. I'm not gonna sit there and take pictures of charts and tell you whether you should buy it or not. It's more about my creative journey as a landscape photographer. And hopefully this lens will expand my horizons. So it's only one way to put that to the test. And that's to get out there into the field and let's take some pictures. Good evening and welcome to Dartmoor and part one of my journey of discovery with the Velvet 56. The aim of tonight is to go out and try and take some uh, traditional or classic landscape images with the Velvet 56. Now what I mean by that is that I'm going to take the type of landscape image that I would normally take but I'm going to take it with the Velvet 56 so I can try and get an appreciation of the characteristics of this particular lens. Now the location I've chosen tonight is Emsworthy Tor which you can see just there behind me, it comprises of that, that rocky tor there and that beautiful hawthorn tree. So I'm going to have a little walk about, find out if there's a good composition to be had. It's uh, an unusual focal length perhaps for this type of image at 56mm, so there's a bit of a, a challenge there for me, but I'm fairly confident I can get something. So I'm going to have a wonder about, I'll come back to you in a couple of minutes, discuss what my composition is and how I'm going to shoot the image. Okay, I've had a good look about and I've come up with three possible compositions. The first one is going to be a shot that encompasses both the tree and the tour, which is where I'm standing from just now. Uh, and the other two is, and this has kind of been inspired by the fact that I, I have a limited focal length on the lens, so I'm going to shoot the tree on its own and I'm going to shoot the tour on its own. So a little bit different from um, what I would normally do here. So already it's getting me to, to think a little bit differently. But I'm going to start with a shot first. Um, I'm going to try and get used to the lens, get myself familiarised with it, take a few shots, try various different apertures, uh, see what happens. Um, it's already it's a manual focus lens, so I'm going to have to do manual exposure. So it should be a, a good test of my skills as well. So I'm going to get to work, and once I've got an image that I'm happy with, I'll come straight back to you and I'll tell you how I've got it set up. Right, so I've taken a, a number of frames there using a variety of different apertures. Um, so sort of first impressions of the lens, yeah, it's a little bit tricky to use, um, especially for, for landscapes, not what I'm used to. Um, so obviously manual aperture control, manual focus. So in terms of focus, um, it's quite difficult. So you have to really go into live view and nail that focus. Obviously most of the uh, focusing is designed for, for close-up photography. So I'm, I'm going quite close to infinity on the lens, but just pulling it back just a, just a fraction. But there's not much leeway, so I have to zoom in quite closely in live view and just make sure that that focus is nailed. I have to check that each time I change the aperture. Changing the aperture, I've gone from f16 to 11 to 8 um, to 5.6. Past 5.6, things get very blurry, very milky, and I don't think it's suited well for this type of photography at least anyway. Um, at f16, you can just about see the blur around the edges of the frame, but by 5.6, there's quite a lot of it. So it'll be really interesting to see when I get back home in the computer and I have a look at these images on the screen, um, how, that, how that looks and how that um, change in aperture changes the effect and, and the way that image looks. So now that I've got this image, I'm gonna head up there and do some of the uh, just a tree and just a tall type pictures.
Okay, so I've taken uh, pictures of all three of my compositions now, and it's been a uh, sort of interesting time out with the Velvet 56. Now, I'm not entirely sure this is probably going to be the lens that I am going to use for taking big vistas. Um, I think it's obviously designed for sort of shallow depth of field or close-up subjects, but that doesn't preclude it from me using it in landscape photography. I just have to shoot slightly different landscape images. Saying that though, I am looking forward to getting back to find out what these images look like, especially the ones I shot down at about f5.6. I want to see how the, the blurring of the edges of the frame um, affects the, the image uh, and how it maybe compares to what it looks like when it's shot at f16. So it's certainly been um, a good time out with the camera and very interesting. Now, I don't think any of the images I've shot tonight are going to be end up in my portfolio. The lighting conditions are far too harsh. I've come out quite early in the evening. But that wasn't really the point. The point was to come out, get used to the Velvet 56, learn how to shoot with it. So, you know, manual aperture control, manual focus. So it, it's been time well spent. So I'm going to keep the camera in my hands as I walk back to the car, because, you know, I might see a few things that um, I might want to take a picture of, um, and I can show you those later on. Other than that, I think in the next part, I'm going to start moving into sort of more close-up landscape photography, shallow depth of field landscape photography, things that maybe this lens is better designed for. So um, I'll see you in part two. Good morning and welcome to France and part two of my voyage of discovery with the Velvet 56. Now, before we get all excited and think I'm some sort of international jet setting landscape photographer, I'm actually here on holiday. Um, so, but I thought it would be the great opportunity for me to try out the Velvet 56 in some new um, locations. So I've come to quite a rural bit of France. Um, I'm certainly not gonna murder the French language by trying to pronounce some of the names, so I'll just be popping them up as the screen as I go along. So um, I'm here this morning, I'm actually just sat in the field on a rather overcast um, day. Now, I'm gonna get the camera set up and I'll explain to you exactly why I'm sat in the field. Okay, so for my first shot, I'm gonna take a picture of the sunflower here behind me. So it's gonna be a macro shot, so I'm gonna try out some of the macro capabilities of the lens. Uh, macro photography is not something I do, so this will be uh, quite an interesting experience. Now. You'll see the sunflowers on its own there. Now, there are fields of sunflowers around here, uh, but unfortunately, um, I've come quite late in the season and most of them uh, are looking a bit, uh, looking like they're ready to be harvested. They're, they're all pointing downwards and looking a bit gray. But I managed to find a solitary one in the field. It's looking quite bright, um, so it should make for a good picture. So I've got the camera set up on the tripod. Um, I'm gonna try a few different settings. Again, try a few different apertures. I need to make sure I nail that focus. Um, so I can get the detail in the sunflower. Um, so I'm going to take a few shots. And I'll come back to you and, and tell you how I've got the camera set up. Okay, so I've got my camera settings locked in now. I'm at f4, ISO 400, and 1 125th of a second. Now, as you can see, the sky is quite overcast there behind me. That's giving me a nice even light um, across the sunflower, so that's making life a little bit easier. But I have had to go to ISO 400 um, just so I can have a shorter shutter speed. There's a little bit of a breeze and it's blowing the sunflower from side to side. So I just want to make sure I freeze the action there. I've gone for F4 um, as it gives me a reasonable amount of depth of field, but it's still enough to blow out the background. I'm still finding that F1.6 and F2, um, for me anyway, still um, quite difficult to work with. But F4 has given me um, the results that I need. So it's just starting to rain, so I'm going to try and take a few more shots um, in case it gets, gets heavier, um, and I'll pop up some of the results. Okay, so that's me got my picture of the sunflower. I mean, it's quite a pleasing image. Um, I quite like it. I mean, obviously, it's not going to win any awards, but in terms of learning more about macro photography and the macro capabilities of, of the Velvet 56, it's certainly been time well spent, uh, and I'm quite happy with the image, especially um, the blown out background and the detail in the head of the sunflower. Now, the wind is starting to pick up a little bit. It's getting quite wet now as well. Um, so I think my time here is done. So um, I'll see you shortly when I get to the, the next location. Uh, it's probably gonna be um, a different day, I think. We'll wait for the sun to come back out, which being in France, probably isn't gonna be very long. So I'll see you at the next one. Good morning and welcome to another day in France. And I'm pleased to say it's a lot sunnier and brighter today. Now, my plan for this morning is to shoot um, some things along this river. Um, it's nice and calm, so there's lots of nice reflections, uh, there's boats, wildflowers, all sorts of things for me to shoot. Uh, but my first um, shot I'm going to take this morning is of the beautiful cottage there, which is behind me. Very picturesque 
chocolate box um, type cottage. Now how I'm going to use the Velvet 56 for this particular shot is I'm going to use a relatively uh, open aperture, probably around sort of uh, f4, f2.8, um, and I want to try and use that, uh, the effect of the Velvet 56 to blur the edges um, of the image just to kind of ha enhance the um, picturesque nature of that cottage. So um, I'm going to get the camera set up, take a few frames, and I'll come back to you in a minute. Well, that seemed to go quite well. I managed to get a couple of nice images. I took one looking straight onto the cottage and one just from the side. I could really see the effect of the Velvet 56 as it kind of blurred the edges. Um, I don't know whether the F4 version or the F2.8 version will work best. Um, I'll probably only find out when I get back home and I process those images. But so far, it's been a good start down here at the river. Um, I'm going to take a further walk up the bank and um, see what else I can find. Good morning again. I've actually moved on from my original location where I was shooting that house earlier. Um, I was trying to find some boats along that part of that river, which I, and I did find them, but at 56 mile, I found it quite difficult to get a good composition. The boats are all quite close in um, and it just didn't, didn't work. So I went in the car, did a little bit of exploring and I found this other waterway. Now I think this is more of a, a canal uh, than a river. But the good thing about here, the boats are in a good position and it allows me to sort of sit back from them a little bit and frame them uh, in a slightly better way, hopefully giving me a more pleasing composition uh, with the Velvet 56. So I'm going to get the camera all set up, take some test compositions. I want to phone something that I like. Um, I'll come back to you until I have got things set up. Okay, so I've got my composition set up and it's fairly straightforward. So I've put the camera in a vertical composition so I can get more of the boat and the canal in. Um, I'm using the canal in, as the background. As it flows off into the distance, there's some nice morning mist uh, just coming up off the water. Um, I'm not sure if it'll come through in the pictures or the video, um, but it's there anyway. And, and for the foreground, I've got obviously the boats. Now this is where I'm focusing the camera. Now I'm going to use an aperture somewhere between, or I'll either use f2.8 or f4, I'll probably shoot them both, and I'll focus in on some of the detail of the boat. Now what that means is that the boat will be obviously be sharp, um, but off out into the distance where the uh, canal is, that will go nice and blurry. Now this is where I hope that sort of things will uh, work well for the Velvet 56. It will give me that really nice creamy, uh, blurry background. Uh, but the boats will be nice and sharp. So hopefully this is going to make for a nice, uh, pleasing image. So I'm going to take some shots. Uh, I'll come back to you and let you know how I've got on. Well, I've taken a few pictures of the boats and on the back of the screen, the results look pretty good actually. So I'm really pleased with the way the Velvet 56 has helped me uh, capture this scene. I've got the kind of sharpness in the uh, foreground area where the boats are, and then um, it's really dropped off very nicely as it goes off down the canal into the distance. So it's been a good scene for the um, Velvet 56. So my time up here in France is almost uh, coming to an end now, uh, unfortunately. Um, I will obviously continue to take pictures um, as I see them. Uh, I think they're going to suit well for the Velvet 56, but this is pretty well the end of the, this part of the video. So I'm going to head home, um, and in the next part, um, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to post-process the images, uh, discuss the results, print them off, um, and we'll see where we go from there. Hello and welcome to part three of my journey of discovery with the Velvet 56. Uh, I'm back here in the UK, back in my office, and I'm ready to post-process, print and review the images that I took. Now I took quite a few images over the last few weeks, um, but I've done my selects uh, on the screen there. Uh, and so the next stage for me is to post-process those images. Now I'm not gonna bore you with a post-processing video. Needless to say, I use Lightroom. I'll do some basic adjustments, um, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows. Um, and then once that's done, I'll print them off with my Canon Pixma Pro 10S. And then once I have them in physical form, we'll have a discussion about what those images look like. It'll be interesting to see the effects 
um, that the Velvet 56 has had in those images. Now, obviously, I've seen them on the back of the LCD screen, um, but I think until I get them in my hands in physical form, uh, I won't be able to fully appreciate what the lens has done for, for the compositions that I've taken. So I'm gonna get post-processing these images. I'll come back to you once I've got them printed off and we'll have a closer look at them. Okay, so the first set of images that I'm gonna look at are the ones that I took up at Dartmoor. Now this was my first time out with the Velvet 56, so it was quite a bit of discovery about um, how the lens works and the types of effects that I can get from it. But um, these are the pictures here. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so here's my first two images. Now one thing that I did learn when I was post-processing these images is that um, because it's a manual aperture lens, uh, the aperture at which I took the pictures at um, isn't recorded in the XF data. So I actually don't know exactly what aperture I had the lens set at for each of these pictures, but what I can do is describe the differences, um, which are, um, are quite apparent. So the bottom Im image here is probably um, an image that's been used with a relatively small aperture, probably around um, f16. The image is um, perfectly sharp right in the middle, and then around the edges there's that slight blurring, which is an effect of the um, Velvet 56. The image above here um, would have been shot at a, a wider aperture, could have been something like f11, f8 maybe, um, but the effect of the blurring around the edges is much more uh, visible here. Elements of the tree here are pretty sharp, um, whereas around here they're getting quite blurry. So that's one thing I did learn about the lens um, while wow, in Dartmoor was it's really the centre areas here. Um, are the, are the sharp areas of the image. And if you get the, the focus right, yeah, they're extremely sharp, but um, varying the aperture will uh, vary the, the kind of um, blurring, swelling effect um, around the edges of the image. So here we have um, the next two images that I took in Dartmoor. Uh, these are of, of the um, tour, it's just itself. Very similar um, kind of visual effect as to the, the previous set of images. Here we've got uh, an image taken with a, a relatively small aperture, again, probably around f16. There is some slight blurring um, or that swelling effect uh, around the edges, but most of this image around the centre area is pretty sharp. Uh, the image on the left here, again, probably taken with, um, with a slightly wider aperture. The differences in the swelling and the sort of blurring effect around the edges is much more pronounced in this picture. And here we have the final two images that I took um, on Dartmoor, this time of the tree on its own. Again, um, this will be the picture taken with a relatively small aperture. Everything's pretty sharp. There are some of the blurring around the edges there. Uh, but in this picture where I've used a larger aperture, you can see here, uh, compared to here, there's a, a lot more sort of blurring of, of the edges and particularly around some of the, just on the edge of the, of the tree there. Um, overall, I actually quite like these, these images and I quite like the effect um, that the uh, Velvet 56 has given to this image. After Dartmoor, I was then in France and the first location I went to was to take pictures of these sunflowers. So after my adventure on Dartmoor with the Velvet 56, I went on to France and one of the goals of going there was to try um, something a little bit different. And one of the things I wanted to try was macro photography. So I took the picture of this um, sunflower here that I found in a field near where I was staying. So I've got an F4 version here and an F2.8 version. So as you can see, there's a bit of difference there between the blurring of the background between the F4 and the F2.8 version. Uh, in the F4 version here, the sunflower is perfectly sharp. Um, on the F2.8 version, you're just starting to get some glow um, around the, the petals there and it's just going a little bit, bit softer. But both images, um, are really pleasing. Also while I was in France I visited that beautiful river and uh, took these images of this white cottage here. Now again I'm not entirely sure what apertures I was using here um, but I suspect this is probably f5.6 and this is f4 maybe it could be f2.8 but here um, you can clearly see the difference um, in the effect that the Velvet 56 has had on the image. So even in this uh, one here you can see the blurring around the corners there. 
but when it stops down to f2.8 that is um, really quite strong um, but it's it's strong but not necessarily in a bad way I, I quite like um, the effect now if you want to know what it looks like when we stop down to f2 this is an f2 image that I took now here the effect is really pronounced around the sides in the corner here and you can see at f2 this is where the glow starts to, to really become a feature of the image. Um, you can see it here um, and around the, around the edges here. So for me, this is maybe a little bit too strong for the type of image um, that I might take. So I would probably stick with the um, F2.8 version. Um, but for, for this type of image or, or this particular scene, I quite like the effect that the Velvet 56 has given. For my final location in France, I went down to a rather misty canal uh, to take pictures these canal boats. So again I'm not 100% sure on the apertures but I'm thinking this is probably going to be about this will be f4 f5.6 and this is most likely to be f2.8. Here I was deliberately going for not only the the nice effect that I was going to get from the Velo 56 but also a shallow depth of field. So I was probably focused somewhere on the on the, the back of the, the seat here on the boat. So you can see here in the f5.6 or f4 version um, Things are pretty sharp here, and then you get a nice drop off and a bit of blur in the background. But that is a bit stronger there in the F2.8 version. Um, both versions are, are very appealing, and I quite like the effect here that you get from the Velvet 56, and also the fact that it's a shallow depth of field as well. Um, both very pleasing images. And finally, it wasn't just France and Dartmoor that I took pictures with the Velvet 56. It did spend quite a lot of time in my camera bag, so I managed to grab a few extra pictures. So I'm going to now talk about these two. First of the images here is uh, one that was also taken up in Dartmoor. Um, it's a shallow depth of field image, so I'm focused in and all around here. Um, and I've probably got it set at about f5.6 or f4. Um, again, I really like the effect here, uh, the sharp detail in the centre of the image there on the rocks, and the really nice drop off um, as we look through the frame of the, the picture and you can start seeing that characteristic Velvet 56 sort of blurring um, around the edges of the frame. And for the final image I've got here, it's another sunflower, but however this one was taken in Devon. Um, another macro shot obviously, um, starting to get used to the lens um, at this point. Um, really love the detail uh, in the middle of the sunflower there. Um, got the, the focus just right. Um, again, probably f4, might be f2.8. Um, but the detail that the lens rendered um, is, is beautiful. Um, it's a slightly distracting background, even at f4, f2.8. Um, but overall, um, really starting to get to, to grips with the lens and, and understanding some of the good scenarios in which I can use it. Just before I conclude this part of the video, I just want to show you a couple of my favourite images. So the first one is of the house down at the riverside here in France. Now this is already a very picturesque scene, but I really like the way that the Velvet 56 sort of blurred around the edges of the frame. I think it gave a really nice effect for that particular scene. And the other image I, I like is of the um, canal boats that I managed to take on that misty morning. Um, nice shallow depth of field, pin sharp here, but I really like the way that the Velvet 56, it drops off as that canal goes off into the distance there. Really like that one. So that's it for this particular part of the video. In the next part, it will be the final part, part four, um, and I will discuss my conclusions and thoughts about the Velvet 56. So let me give you my final thoughts on my experience of using the Lens Baby Velvet 56. I really enjoyed using this lens. I had a lot of fun getting to know it and trying out different types of photography. It is a very different lens from what I used to. I mean, I think it's got like the manual aperture and the manual focus. So I had to set things up a little bit different. Obviously I had a slightly limited um, focal length at only 56 mil, so I had to compose things a little bit different. But in terms of the overall experience, it would get me to use the lens and to take different types of shots. Um, it was a big success. I really liked some of the characteristics of the lens when used in the right scenario. So things like uh, when I took the picture of that house down at that French river and also the shallow depth of field um, I used in the canal boats as well. So used in the right conditions in the right way, this is a great lens. Now, is it a lens that's always going to be in my camera bag? Probably not. Um, it's of quite limited use, but I think in the right situations, it can be used to great creative effect. So 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do hit the like button and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear whether you tried different lenses or whether you've tried the Lens Baby Velvet 56, either with landscape photography or something else. And if you do like this content, please do hit the subscribe button. And if you click on the bell icon, you'll get notified as soon as I post up new content. So until the next video, I'll see you then.